Um, let, uh, let's just go ahead and get started. Who's this presentation for? This is for American Wushu uh, Taolu athletes who are um, for all skill levels. Uh, is, this presentation is actually focused for the rules in the United States, but can be applied to generally throughout the Pan American region. Uh, for international viewers, um, you should probably consult with your uh, with your local national federation and continental federation to see if there's any uh, variances. But for us. Uh, what we're talking about is just all, all of the rules that are used currently in the um, in the United States and basically in the American region. Um, the first question is, why should I care about the rules? I mean, why are we having a presentation on rules that, are, that can be about as exciting as, you know, watching paint dry? But the rules are important because they, they will explain to you how the judges came to create your score. Also, the different rule sets will enable you to have different rights, different, um, uh, and uh, you can, some things you can, uh, you can ask about, some things you can't, some things you can, uh, you can show, you can change, some things you can't, and the methods of appeal differ according to which rules. So, like, since you're going to a competition, it's the same as playing a game. It's best to know the rules before you, before you start playing. Um, and understanding the rules beforehand will ensure that you get the most out of your competition experience. So, how many rules are out there? At present, there's roughly three sets of rules. Um, and they are all originated from the International Shoe Federation and were used at different times. Um, the there's a big difference between the first set and the and the second two. The we call the the first set are like the or, or like the older rules, um, but the last ver version of it was the 1999 rules for international wushu talu routine competition from I IWF, and they were used. This style of rules was used since from the inception of the IWF and uh, uh, all the way until 2005. Um, and here in the United States, versions of that rule existed even longer. But if you look, um, if you look, the total sum of these rules is only 13 pages long. Um, and then in 2005, then IWF created new rules, and these are also still in use. And these were the rules for international wushu talu competition, um, and it got much bigger. It's like 81 pages, and then. Uh, just last year, 2019, the newest rule set came out, the Wushu Taolu Competition Rules and Judging Methods um, excerpts, and that came uh, that came out last year, and that's 123 pages. So they just, they, in general, there's three sets of rules, but you're going to, uh, um, you can tell which, which which one they are by how thick it is. And the older rules are, uh, are will be a, uh, a little bit more, um, up to the uh, there's more variance for the judges and uh, as they as we go later in the rule classes that the, the judges are much more um are required to follow a much more technical um program okay so uh what are, what are some of the differences um the for the 99 rules these are um they use the fewest number of judges they have these uh and they have corner judges i'll show you in a second uh, what it looks like but they refi uh to to run the 99 rules you only need three judges at minimum or up to six judges maximum the pros pros of this set is that it's the most versatile it can be used in all types of wishy competition and there's the largest pool of judges available for people who who are uh, are hosting tournaments throughout the region. Um, it's ideally suited for beginner wushu talu athletes. Um, the the cons is um, the that uh, the, it's the most subjective rule set. It's um, it, it's implemented in a bunch of different ways. As I said, it, this the ninety nine rules have been really used since the eighties, and so. There is a lot of they were there were a lot of different iterations and variances um, between um, between the time that the rules were first created to the to, through the the final their final iteration in ninety nine and um, a lot of people in, uh, implemented in different ways for the two thousand five rules uh, you can tell because the judges are are sitting in a row the um, yeah, rather than in the corners. And the, uh, this is the first introduction to what they call degree of difficulty movements, um, sometimes referred to in the, uh, in the, the Chinese pinyin version of Nandu. And, they, uh, the, and, the, and it requires more technical training in, in order to, uh, to, uh, to run this type of rule. The judges have to take a, a more, uh, have, to, uh, have to spend a lot more time being trained. Um, 
this is kind of a hybrid option between the 2019 and the 1999 rules. Um, and uh, it's, it's kind of a good rule set to begin for intermediate level athletes uh, because it's the introduction to, to the degree of difficulty moves, which, which are, which are used in the 2019 rules, but uh, just at a higher level. So this is kind of a way to get the toe into it. Um, and then the, finally, you have the 2019 rules and this requires the most judges. Um, and they, they have, so they, there's uh, 12 de- Scoring judges uh, or head judges require the assist, assistant chief is pretty much is while not required in, on paper is required in practice and it's, uh, and of course the chief referee too so you need a ton of people uh, it's the most technical rules it's only been used once in the United States back in the, for the, our last team trials before the pandemic and for the and it's only been used once by IWF in Shanghai at the last World Two Wushu Championships um, the it, it, it is the most detailed and has the technical requirements um, uh, with the most attention to uh, adjusted ju- judgment for Chang Chen, Nan Chen, and Tai Ji Chen. It should be pointed out that the 2019 rules in particular are really only opt- optimized for Chang Chen, Nan Chen, and Tai Ji Chen events. Um, if you're doing like traditional or things like that, then actually in like 2019, IWF created traditional rules, and, and uh, those those are a little bit more um, suitable for for other um, uh, for, for other styles of, of wushu, and uh, or using the 99 rules, as I said before, it's super versatile, so you could use that for everything. Um, the cons of the 2019 rules is. Having that many judges um, uh, makes it the most time-consuming version of, of having a, a, a rules and the most cost-prohibitive. Um, so at present, there's only 37 judges in the United States who are certified to judges format. Uh, 13 IWF judges and 24 POF judges in the country. That's all. There's no. There's nobody else can is is certified or able to, to do this. And so, and it's really only suitable for advanced. Uh, competition, and we'll get to that in a little bit when, when I show you uh, how these how these different rule sets work. Okay, so let's start with the 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 ninety nine. Um, the ninety nine rules are the are, are the easiest, um, and as they, as I said before, you yeah, refer to the judges as corner judges. Um, there's five. Uh, even if there's six judges, there's five scoring judges, and the um, uh, but you, you can see J1, J2, J3, J4, J5. The, um, if all if all those judges are present, then the head judge in the middle does not judge, and uh, and just the, just the corner judges will will, uh, will give scores. Um, the score is obtained by uh, they drop the high and the low of the five scores and they average the middle three. Now we talked about versatility for these rules, and I, if you see, I put in parentheses. These are rules, but really guidelines because there's so much variance. And you'll see what I mean. Because officially on paper, uh, the 99 rules that state that the point spread is is divide is what they is a six two two point spread. Uh, six points is for for movements. Uh, two points is for harmony and for um, uh, um, the the harmony and the overall overall power speed that sort of thing. And the uh, last two points is supposed to be for choreography. That's on paper. In practice, it's never to my in my experience ever been used like that much more practically is that the uh the tournament organizer and the head judge will collaborate and create a set of ranges um for competition for example the most common is six to like 6.0 to 7.0 would be beginner 7.0 to 8.0 would be intermediate 8.0 to 9.0 would be advanced um or or, or those or set or, and, any other range in between, uh, in between. there's there, you know, t- to make it nicer, sometimes they do uh, a little bit of inflation in like 6.5 to 7.5, 8.5, uh, 8.5 to 9.5, something like that. But there, but there's a, usually a range for the judges to, to go on as a guideline uh, to deliver their score. And each judge delivers a score based on what, what they saw. Um, uh, then there's, this is a, another set of where it becomes guidelines rather rules than rules because there's 
printed rules in the, in the 99 uh, um, set that say that if the middle three scores vary by 0 0.2 and the total is over nine, then the, there is a, a, the head judge should rescore. And, uh, and if, it, if the variance is 0 0.3 uh, or more for the, for the scores and the total is under nine, then, then that should also trigger a rescore. Um, what that means is the variance means like the, the, the je corner judges that you see on the side, if they say, okay, this is a, a beginner a athlete and one person says, I, I saw uh, uh, 6.2, the other guy says 6.2 and the other guy says 6.7. Um, the it, it, you're supposed to rescore because the uh, the the one judge clearly didn't see what the others saw. Um, but uh, in the in the rules, it's supposed to you drop the high and the low, and you and you would only look at the variance in the middle. But in practice, because it's before uh, before '99 in the in the '80s, for many of the uh, of the of the head judges who um, who use these rules, they come from an older time. And in that time, the original rule was if any of the scores are over 0.6, like any of the five scores, if there is a more than a point zero point six variance in the scores, it means the, the judges didn't see, didn't see the same thing. He calls a meeting and they rescore. Um, but that's, that is what actually what happens at the competitions, but that's not what's in the rules. So, like I said, these are kind of more like guidelines. Uh, and th and this setup is it, it can be used for beginner, intermediate, and advanced, and yet everyone will be judged on the same play playing field, uh, you know, because you're using the same set of rules. But it's kind of more optimized these days for beginner and inter intermediate athletes. Um, the other thing is that I wanted to point out is this is also because these ranges are used. This is also why some athletes and some um, coaches, uh, there, there is a misnomer of uh, taking one score from one competition and then comparing it to another score from another competition. This is not correct because the when you're set, presetting these ranges, they uh, since they're all uh, uh, subjective and variable, it, you, uh, it means that one at one school, one place, a seven point one could be great, and then at another at another competition that could have been the the middle or the the end of the the bottom of the range. It doesn't mean anything. And then when we get to the to the current ruling system, they um, it, it varies entirely because there's no ranges at all. Um, and so then with the, with the, with the the manner in which the scores are are, are calculated are very so differently that they can't be, uh, you can never really uh, uh, compare the, the different scores from different, different competitions that had different judges and using different rule sets. It's just like uh, apples to gorillas. It just, it, it's just not, um, uh, it, it, it's not, it, 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 does, it just doesn't uh, work. Okay, so let's move on the 2000. Okay, so five rules, you can see there are nine scoring judges rather than the five. And the uh, and you can see that they are in, uh, you can see A1, C, uh, C1, B1, A2, C2, B2. What these are, are there's different, three different judging panels. One is the, for the quality of movements, one is for overall performance, and one is for degree of difficulty. Quality of movements is uh, allotted the most value and given five points overall performance is given three points a degree of difficulty is given the least and given two points um now for this type of competition if you there, you are doing a degree of difficulty event the athletes must submit two forms at the time of registration it's a required movement form and a degree of difficulty form okay so let's talk about what, what is the quality of movement um uh, judging panel um the rules say the judges in panel A shall deduct points according to the errors committed by a competitor during his performance of the whole routine. Okay, so sometimes the rules, they, they're it's not wrong, but it's, a, it's not terribly helpful. Um, you know, it's, it's, the judge will deduct points. Yes, we know. Uh, but uh, the, uh, a better explanation is that the judging panel for quality of movement works on individual movements. 
They look, they break down the, your uh, routine based on the individual movements that compose that, that routine and they review them as such. So they're just looking at the component parts. Um, and anything that doesn't conform to the standards listed in the, in the regulations, they're deducted. But, and the re regulations are broken down into seven categories for the 2005 regulations. Um, and we're not going to go, we only have a short amount of time today, and I'm not going to go over all the codes. Um, but I'll go over the, the biggest ones, but, uh, but this will give you a, some sort of classification. Uh, so you can see that the tens are balances, the twenties are leg techniques, the thirties are jumping techniques, the forties are tumbling techniques that we use for non trend only, uh, fifties are stances, sixties are for weapons and seventies are, are other deductions. Um, what does that mean? It means like if you were to, to do a, a front sweep or a back sweep, that will fall under leg techniques. If you do, a, a if you need to do your bent leg balance, cold type in hung, that will be, uh, it's, it's code 14. It has part of balances. If you're doing jumping front kick, that's 30. Um, uh, so if you see, uh, there's individual um, codes for in each of these in each of these categories. We're not going to go through them all in this presentation, but you can go to the rules and, and look at, at them. But as an athlete, even uh, and if you don't remember all of these codes, when you see um, when you see your score and you see these deduction codes, you can get an idea just from the very first number of what the heck it was. And so, oh, if it started with a three, I know it was it was one of my jumps. If it was uh, if it's with a with five of when one of the stances has some problem, something like that. But just to give you an idea, but then you can go back and, and look and look up the specific codes yourself. Okay. Um, let's go to overall performance. The overall performance the four judges in the judging panel B will evaluate the overall performance of the whole routine and deduct points for choreography changes in it. The highest and the lowest shall be deducted. The average of the two middle scores should be awarded to competitors as, the, uh, uh, as their overall performance score. Now, you could say, well, how'd you get the four judges? Because you just showed us a picture where there's three. In the 2005 rules, the head judge is also a um, uh, an overall performance judge. So that's where you're getting four. Um, so three uh, uh, specifically assigned B judges and the head judge also gives a B score. And that's where they get the, the four. And whereas the A panel judges are looking at the component parts of the routine, the overall performance panel, the B group, is looking at the totality of the routine, the choreography, the usage of space, the directions, inclusion of all the required movements, and all your degree of difficulty movements are all included in the overall performance score. And then it's graded on a nine-tier scale. And the scale looks like this. And it, they break it up between superior, average, and inferior. And the, the point range is, goes from 1.01 .01 to three points. So it's actually not possible to get zero points in, um, in your overall performance. Okay. Now, the degree of difficulty um, panel, ju the judging panel C. The judges in, P so, uh, in panel C shall confirm the degree of difficulty completed by the competitor and his actual performance. Basically what this means is that for the degree of difficulty, um, there's, you got, remember I told you there's two points. Those two points are made up by in in two groups of things uh, of movements uh, of movements and connections. So it's like um, the uh, and you can see the different types of movements. Um, there's uh, from balances, jumps, leg, uh, leg techniques, tumbling, um, tumbling. When they say tumbling for non trend only, they mean jump inside fall or uh, back tuck or or gainer or any, any of those. Uh, and then the connections are how you either land your jump or how you build, or connect it into something else. And there, there's a variety of different ones from dynamic and static, connection between static and static, connection between dynamic and dynamic, or like toss and catch for what, for the weapon. But you must select enough, uh, uh, enough movements uh, and there's, the charts in the in the rules to show you how um, how much what the value is of all the movements and but the limit is one point four and you must uh, have connect, uh, you connections um, that uh, get uh, with a maximum of zero point six and so you uh, you, you want to put all this together to to check on your check on your score um, to, to make your degree of difficulty four okay.
Now, we kind of talk about the degree of difficulty forms, uh, but there's only 10 events that will actually use degree of difficulty. Nothing else will. Uh, they are the basic long fist events, the Changchun, the broad search rate search staff sphere, uh, southern fist, uh, uh, and then the Taiji Chen and Taiji Jian. Um, that's it. There, there's no other, uh, no other events will use uh, uh, the, the Nandu or the degree of difficulty judging. And at that point, the, there will be less judges because the, uh, there's uh, the, three, the, the three judges that, uh, that make up the C panel would be removed. So if, if you're in a non Nandu event, even using 2005 rules, you, uh, you would see seven judges rather than uh, 10. Rather than having the head judge and nine scoring judges, there would only be the head judge and six. Okay. Now we talked about the uh, the forms that you would need to if you do fill a, if you are entering a, a, a non do event. This is really important because you must have these. Uh, it, it, they, these are kind of like a syllabus which, uh, for uh, which uh, an agreement between uh, between you and the judges. Um, there, you're in this first one is the required movement forms. And you'll see, uh, you have to put the, uh, the here they're called compulsory movements. And you have, you see there's uh, the, uh, space for all four sections and there's boxes that you can fill out that would show um, what, in what order you're going to put all of your uh, required movements. And they have to be in the, in, in the order that you want them to be, uh, to be judged. And then, uh, so th this form is required. And then the second form is, this form is for the degree of difficulty. This is very similar, except here you will write in the codes for your for the movements that you want to do. Again, re referring back to the, uh, the 2005 rules, if you look at it, all of the movements have codes. But what I want to highlight here is if you see, you can put the code here. There's this box here. This is where you should out what uh, you or or you can write it in English or whatever, whatever you mean. Make sure that you write what, what, you, which, uh, what code, which, what you think that should be, um, so that uh, you can see that uh, that way we can double, you can double check because if if you, if we say there's a code for jump inside kit, it's three two three A, but uh, that would be jump inside three sixty, uh, but. If you meant you wrote three two three eight, but you meant jump, um, uh, uh, you meant jump, you, you wrote three two three eight, but you meant jump outside. Jump outside was three two four eight, um, and so if there were, basically if there was a mistake, yeah, uh, we can see uh, you write it down twice, and we, if there's a discrepancy, we can um, uh, the the tournament organizer or, or or the person running the tournament can check with you ahead of time to make sure that is actually what you meant. So it's it's good to use both. Um, uh, to, to use, uh, that's why the two boxes are there. So make, make sure that you. Uh, I encourage you to to to, to fill out uh, fill out both. Don't just write in the code. Um, even even if you're super confident about it, it's also it's not just. Uh, I mean, even if you're super confident in your knowledge of the codes, it's also remember that these are being processed by volunteers too. So maybe they don't read it right, or maybe they don't because. Uh, Often these will have to be trans, uh, put into scoring systems. And they have to be moved from uh, the, the data has to be tra transferred into the different scoring systems. If they transcribe it wrong or they or, uh, or something like that, then uh, you'll have a problem when you, when you uh, when you compete. Um, the other thing about this is you must like uh, as I referred to this kind of as a syllabus or an agreement. You got to put down exactly what you're going to do, and then do what you're what you're going to what you say you will. If you don't, if you decide, oh, I put three 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 A, I'm going to do a butterfly, and then decide to switch it to a butterfly twist, that's going to be a problem because. But the judges are trained to the to look for exactly what's on here. If they don't see it, if they see a twist instead of a butterfly, it, that will instead of confirming it, they will deny it. Said that wasn't there, and then, uh, or if you add something, um, it's possible to that the um, going strict, strict by the rules, the uh, 
if something else was added and then uh, if another uh, that uh, on the Nandu form that wasn't in the original. And so all of the other, uh, all the other uh, uh, difficulties are done in the wrong order. They will all become no, uh, because you can, only, the, ju the judges are only going to confirm what they see in the order that's, pre that's presented to them. If you change the order and they're all off, it's conceivable and it has happened where they, they where the uh, where the judging panel just uh, so from the time that you changed it, it all of the answer, all of the answers are zero um, it I, well, I keep saying it's possible because it's at the chief referee's discussion and the, the, the head judge if you're lucky and they catch it you can, they can tr try to fix it they're not gunning to kill you but uh, so sometimes they can figure out what you did but you really shouldn't take that that kind of risk um, so that's the that's the degree of difficulties we uh, form. Um, let's move to the 2019 rules. This one that just came out. Uh, I said that it was more judges, it was more technical. And what I mean is the B judges, if you recall before, I said there was three judges and then it, now there's, uh, uh, um, and now there's five. And so now the head judge doesn't score. There's just, uh, in the 2019 rules, the B judges, uh, the B judges have five judges and they they make, they, uh, they, Similar to the 99 rules, you drop the high and low, they average the middle, and that's your B score. A head judge doesn't get involved in scoring. Um, also, and, um, if you recall, I said that seven, there's seven groups of uh, codes for uh, the 2005 rules. In 2019, they added an eighth, and it's hand shapes and body postures. Um, you know, body postures is for tidy time only. Uh, but uh, the, uh, those are going to be talking about your different fist shapes, um, whether or not, like, um, how, the position of your uh, of uh, of all uh, of your of your hands to make sure all of the fingers everything is ac is actually accurate. Also, a routine inspector was added, and uh, he works with the head judge and the assistant chief referee to check the required movements. Um, and the codes were changed slightly um, to uh, uh, to uh, 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 to allow for a cut for. A little bit more flexibility for for adding more difficulty than to add more um, uh, to cor to correct a couple things like tread long was removed the the tai chi uh, thing uh, for a jump landing in the the chen style split um, before it was called tread long dragon dragon dives down but it was determined that that's not actually how uh, tai chi uh, tai chi dragon dive down works. So it's, instead, it was reclassified as a Tai Chi style split and is classified as such in the 2019 rules. Um, also, the appeal process changed to be functional. The, the 2019 rules is the only rules that has uh, uh, where the jury of appeal uh, process can actually uh, change your score, but under very set circumstances. Okay. So um, we're going to go o over the most common deductions, and that is the 70 codes, the other deductions. The 70 codes are the same for the 2005 and 2019 rules. So that's the good thing. We only have to go through these codes and they didn't, they didn't change. They are also the backbone of the new 2019 traditional rules that it will be used at the World Kung Fu Championships. So it's, if you learn these rules, you're basically good for 2005 rules, 2019 rules, and the traditional rules. So um, I, I thought it'd be worth the time to explore, walk, walk you through these because of all the codes, this is probably the ones that you should know the most. Um, one, because they're, you, you, they're the most deductive, but also they have the highest highest risk. The worst penalties are all in 70 codes. Um, and uh, they range from uh, negative 0 0.1 to uh, uh, a 0 0.1 deduction to a 0 0.3 deduction in value. And the first three codes, which are, are some of the most important, all will focus on the loss of balance. The first one is the 70 deduction. Um, and it's actually three deductions in, classified in one. Sways, shuffles, and skips. If you don't, you know, we don't really use any of these terms too much in, uh, in regular English, so I'll explain what they mean. Okay. The first one is when they talk about swaying, they, uh, they break this down, uh, particularly the list deduction by the, your midline, by where your torso is. Your upper torso uh, is, uh, is, uh, is what they're talking about when they talk about sway. And that means that if you go from one side to another side, if you go front, if, you're, if your chest and your back 
goes forward and back or goes side to side, then that is a sway. Um, now, it, it must be going in uh, in multiple directions. So there's uh, it can it has to, it's not if you just lean forward and then uh, and, and, but don't go back, then that is not that then that's not a sway. If you go from just to one side, like you land in your if you land a jumping side horse and some uh, you know you, you ended landed a little bit off and you ended off to one side, but you don't straighten up. You just stay. You just stay tilted to the side. You don't that. You won't get the seven D deduction for that. For that, uh, uh, you're not swaying. The swaying requires two movements. Um, there's a, a also or either either two movements in opposite directions or a circular movement. All of that is uh, is sway. So that's um, uh, it, it, uh, it, it. It delineates the loss of balance in the upper torso, basically. But but it's really important to to be clear that you need that t there's two directions. Okay, now the uh, shuffles and skips refers to the lower torso to your feet, and what they what they mean is shuffle is what they're referring to if your feet move laterally, that they move horizontally. If there's any sort of, sort of motion, if they go go from one um, uh, go from side to side. If, if the actual foot actually moves, um, then in, in each case that that happens, that's a 70. Um, and then skipping or is, is like extra steps. And that's like vertical movement. If, it move, if, the foot, if you land the feet and they slide forward and they move in any way to, to, uh, to, the, to the front or to the back, like vertically, then that, that will be a skip. And uh, in all of these, all of these deductions for other deductions, but and particularly 70, we say it's the most common deduction because in each instance, the, you get deducted for this. So you land jump inside horse and the horse and your horse bounces back four times. Then you know you just, uh, skip, 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 skip. You just got 70, 70, 70, 70. Uh, so you just got a, a point, uh, point one, point one, point point one, point one deduction for a total of zero point four off of one movement. So it can be critical. Um, the deductions are like this because, as I said, because this is a, a loss of balance, is considered a critical error. Um, and so there's and there's no cap on how much it says. Same thing with sways. If you go back and forth, back and uh, if you go side to side, and then you go front to back, that's two. Uh, 70 deductions. Okay, so uh, remember, uh, you needed two different uh, to go in two different directions. So you, uh, it's not if you go to this. This is a, uh, going to the one side is a deduction, and the other side is a deduction. No, it goes side to side. That's one deduction, and then front to back. That's one deduction. Um, and, and with no with no cap, no limit. If can if can if you just keep swaying, um, you, they'll just keep on deducting. Okay, so that's 70, most uh, most common one, and it's a point one in deduction per each instance. Then the next one is additional support. And I put in uh, the single, but I'll explain in just a second. Well, um, well, what this is, is additional support means you put your hand down. You put your, or any of uh, your limbs down to support you, or your weapon. If you uh, if you're using apparatus, you're doing staff. You you're going up on like you're doing raising these hands, T.C. the Lee, and then you tip back and you use your staff to 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 or your spear to hold on to to support you from the ground. That's additional support. Um, now that's different. There's a different code. We'll get to it's uh, 73. If you inadvertently touch the floor, but if you actually put weight on it. This is additional support, and it is a big deal because the deduction is 0 0.2, twice as much as the 70 deduction of most of the other deductions, because it's considered a major loss of balance. Okay, so this is this is a rather a serious deduction, so you want to avoid it. Um, but just to be clear, it's, so it's not just your hand, or just, not just if you were up on one foot and you put your foot on the ground. It can be uh, anything. Uh, your hand, your elbow, your knee. Um, in split, it can even be uh, it, it can even be your butt. If your butt touches it, it bounces off the floor, and, and you and you push off your your hip to, to get back up because uh, you because uh, you fell. That's additional support too. So uh, any additional support from any appendage or body part can or weapon can be deducted. And again, zero point two deduction. Okay. So the last of the loss of balance, the most uh, the most 
serious is the what they call fall. Uh, I'm also put, put this as double additional support. Now, you remember 71 was additional support, a single point of, of additional support. Fall, you would think falls is like if you go snowboarding and you wipe out and you just like, yeah, yeah obviously that's a fall. But in uh, for Wushu, it's more technical. It basically means any two parts of the body touching the ground simultaneously on the floor. That constitutes a fall. So if you were in your, uh, if, if you had your, um, uh, again, we're go, going back to that raise, raise knee stance and you have your, and you have your staff and you can go up and you fall down and then you put your hand down and you have, and you have put the staff down too. Both of them are, are helping you. That's uh, even though your body didn't collapse into the ground, that's still considered a fall. Uh, Anything with two parts of the uh, of the of the body making con contact. So same thing with that split example. Remember I said if your if your hip hits the ground, if the other butt hits the ground, if you put your hand out and that butt hits the ground, you just fell. So that's uh, so why I'm putting this double additional support thing is it's easy mnemonic to re I'm trying to want you guys to remember these codes. Uh, so 71 is a single additional support. Just uh, so 71 one support. And for the fall, it's actually a double support. So 72, two additional supports. That, that would be a fall. But that way you can remember when you see 71, uh, uh, you, you know, it's one, one additional support, 72, two additional support. Okay. So um, we have, uh, well, there's a lot of codes. So the, uh, when you teach the judging courses, everybody has to memorize these things. So uh, uh, all the judges come up with different tricks for how to, how to remember. Um, and then the, the next is uh, 73. Oh, well, then these next ones are all about the weapons. So remember, we, we, we talked about uh, the, the, uh, the we using the weapon support. That's a much bigger de de deduction. This is if you're doing staff flower or, or any flower and you just, or, or uh, liao jian or, 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 or anything, or like any sort of uppercut and you use swipe the floor, you inadvertently hit the floor, or you hit yourself, or the weapon deforms, all of that is, is uh, 73 deduction, and it's a 0 0.1 in each instance. Um, what, uh, so it, if so, if you, uh, it, it's basically anything where you lose, kind of lose control of the weapon. If you, um, I, it's also included, it's not included in English, but it is included in the, uh, in the Chinese, this thing uh, they call it toba, and that means like if you lose the grip, of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, of the weapon that's also included here. Basically, anything where you accidentally hit the floor, accidentally hit yourself, accidentally lose your grip of the uh, of the weapon, um, or you, the weapon is deformed really badly. Um, and the, the what what that means is like your broadsword or your straight sword. If you started off with a straight sword and you end up with a hook because it, it goes all it goes more than 45 degrees then that yeah that will get you a 73 deduction so um it, it, uh any of these three um is 73 and a 0 0.1 is deducted in each instance uh, 74 is if the weapon breaks um if the athlete's weapon breaks during the performance but the athlete can still continue to perform the 74 is deducted and a deduction of 0 0.2 is made um if the weapon is broken beyond uh, to the point of unusable or the head judge deems the broken weapon to be a safety hazard, the head judge may stop the performance. And uh, if, you're, if your weapon is, you can't continue, then and the form is incomplete, no score is given. Um, and then the next is 75 is the weapon drop is uh, uh, this is the most serious of the weapon deductions. If you drop the weapon during the performance of 0.3, is uh, is deducted in each occurrence. The drops are considered more uh, are, are are more are deducted more he heavily than the break because if your weapon breaks, the Chinese weapons the quality is not. I, I mean, I know that we had these nice core presentations with Gene Ching where some Chinese weapons are really well made, but some aren't. And so sometimes it might not totally be your fault if the thing breaks. A little less so. Whereas the weapon drop is entirely user error. And so that's why it's a more serious deduction. And then 
the uh, number 76, wardrobe malfunction or uh, accessory malfunction. This is like the broadsword flag, straight sword tassels, spear tassels, any clothes, uh, headwear are dropped on the floor. Uh, or if the tassel or the flags or anything gets entangled in your body, uh, all of these are 73 dedu uh, deduction. Um, just, uh, it has, it, it's, it also includes uh, basically any part of your uniform. Like if you, uh, non trained guys, if you're wearing, if you guys wear, wear the, the cuffs uh, and then you do qua guy and they, they go flying, well, if two of them went flying, then you got 273 deduction. So make sure, make sure your clothes stay on. The more clothes fall off, you more deductions you get. Um, and the other thing is, uh, it just, it's come up, but um, the, it, it, please note it's the weapons that they weapon uh, the weapons that your clothing or your uh, um and the, or their the weapon accessories uh, it, um but uh the stuff like uh sequins and uh that that glitter that the kid uh, the, the the kids dump in their head by the pound uh that if that stuff falls off it's not it's not deducted although you really should tip the poor volunteer who has to vacuum the the rug because that stuff's all over the place, but you, that, that's not deducted. You, uh, uh, it's it's only uh, uh, apparel and uh, the like your actual uniform or your um, or your weapons accessories. Okay, uh, seventy seven is a failed balance. Um, that means that you you attempted a balance and it didn't and it didn't work. Now, what what does that mean? Is that the calculation of an attempted balance is when you get to a motionless state. So if you are if you're doing bent leg balance and you are still descending, um, or you're still your your butt is still sinking, the timer hasn't started yet. And then, so if some uh, if you just keep, continue to go down and then you pop back up uh, as soon as soon as you hit the, the space that you wanted, that uh, that will co constitute a, a failed balance. So, um, and in like some cases, if he, if it was a described balance like uh, like uh, like uh, Kote Ping Hong, bent leg balance, then you would you would get both. You would get the fourteen deduction and the seventy seven deduction. Um, and the uh, these only apply to you Changshuan Jian Shu Dao Shu Changshu and Guan Shu events only. And for each failed balance, it's a zero point one deduction in each occurrence. Okay, uh, we're almost done. So, uh, 78 is out of bounds, and that's if uh, there is a, uh, the, the competition carpet is 14, uh, 14 meters by eight meters, is a five centimeter uh, line go, uh, going around it. Um, should, the, uh, should the athlete touch the floor outside the boundary with any part of his body, his or her body, uh, this will constitute the out of bounds deduction. So. That means you have to touch outside. Like if you step beyond it, or if, if you or somehow you put your hand on the floor. But if your weapon or your arms go by it without uh, without touching the floor, then it is, uh, it does not uh, it's not considered out of bounds. That's 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 fine. So um, particularly particularly like it, it's most common like with spear. If you're running through the corner and uh, and, and you spin and you spin the the spear and it goes out of bounds, then your arm goes out of bounds. That's that's okay, but if your feet go out of bounds, if you if if anything touches outside of bounds, this will get uh, get you to seventy eight. Okay, and then the last one is uh, uh, forgotten movement. Should an athlete during his performance have a lapse in memory or and be interrupted and pausing unconventionally or have chaotic movements, it's considered forgetting, and in each instance of forgetting, zero point one is deducted. So. Just to review, so there's three types of there's three types of rules. The uh, 1999, which is good for beginners, is versatile and it's the easiest rule set to implement. Like if you're just starting a competition or for the first time, definitely uh, uh, 99 rules are the way to go. Um, and you'll you'll as an athlete you'll see it more in the um, in the beginner in the uh, begin, uh, you'll see you'll see it in more regional tournaments. 
Um, and then well, national tournaments and, and larger tournaments will tend to have 2005 rules by now. And uh, right now, only the, the only the USAWKF team trials is using the 2019 rules because mostly because it's just so expensive and so time consuming to, to do. But uh, uh, it, it's the, it will obviously expand since that's the, the 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 rules that are being that, that are currently being used by IWF. Um, study and review the other deduction codes as they are the most common, but they but as you hopefully can see as we walk through these codes, they're also avoidable. So it's uh, it's possible to for you to to get uh, to to not, to not get these deductions if you uh, if you prepare in advance. And then. So the recommendations are the, the rules are quite technical and detailed, and there are, there uh, there are like I said there was only thirty seven judges right now who are qualified for the two thousand five rules, and only half of them have any experience with the two thousand nineteen rule, and that's all we got for the country. Um, this is where I give you as um, my. Uh, invitation or a request for you to consider taking the judges' courses. So, uh, we, because if you don't know them or if you want to help out in the federation, we could obviously use more judges. Um, and also for your school and for your practice, it's a really good way to enhance your knowledge of of, of basically why uh, how competitive wushu works, how the taolus are de are designed, and what kind of like what what's the optimal way for practicing and teaching. Um, we recommend that every school consider sending at least one person to take either the POF or later the IWS judging courses. At present, every major school that goes to team trials, with the exception of one, um, has a has a judge, uh, at least one one judge, a certified judge um, on their um, you know at their school. This is helpful for so that they can uh, you know. Uh, teach their kids to make sure that, and be confident that that, uh, that the codes are all correct. Um, and then also, I would recommend for you to talk to the judges and get their get their feedback after the event. Um, they are there to help, and they are, uh, there's you know we didn't. Do we don't invite judges based on you know their charming personality or how well they make sushi or something. These are all wushu experts, and they can. Eat, whether or not you choose to use their information or not, it's uh, that's a, that's totally up to you and your coach. But you can get they they can give you perspective. For instance, if you t after a competition, if you ask the judges what they saw, and if you know one one judge just says, "Oh, your outside kick is seems like really slow," um, and you don't see it, but then you ask another judge, and they say, "Yeah, the outside kick, I could time that thing with a calendar." Um, you know you. Even if you don't agree with it, you you can at least take it into advisement that that's what people are seeing, that that, and then you can um, you can decide how to, how you want to address that. Basically, oh, the, con the when I say that you want to learn the rules or know the rules to maximize your experience in competing, it's so that you can um, it, it's so that you you can really see. Uh, get like different opinions, and these are validated opinions. So it's different than a demo. In a dem demo, people don't actually know don't, how many of them really know what wushu is. I mean, uh, there's not that many uh, wushu experts. But at a competition, the judges are are all supposed to be are either certified trained uh, wushu, uh, uh, in in wushu. They know the technicalities of the sport. So getting their information, it's kind of like you paid for it, so you might as well get it. Um, and then with uh, with the, the tournament or organizer, you should ask your questions or concerns early. Um, do, the worst thing you could do is you submit your forms, you never heard back from them, and you don't know what's going on. You're, oh, I'll just figure it out when I get there. Uh, for a tournament organizer, the most busy day is the day of the competition, the morning of. Uh, he has the least amount of time for you to, to, to deal with that kind of situation. However, if you talk to him, two weeks before or a week before, or even a couple of days before, he has much more time and you have his undivided attention. So you will probably get better results the, um, it, with any questions that you have. Deal with the tournament organizers early and don't, uh, don't worry about the, uh, don't, don't hold it all the way until the, the day of the competition. Um, and then uh, we're talking about the forms that you're submitting, the degree of difficulty and requirement movement. Double check to them to make sure they're correct because if there's any sort of error, 
uh, you need to get the, you need to make sure that that's corrected before your event starts. And more importantly, for the 2005 and the 2019 rules, you must make sure that the C judges, the people who are actually ju the, uh, judging it, have the correct version for you. If they don't, it will be too late. When you, you know, it's, you can't go, you can't go back and do it again. So, uh, I advise you to be very proactive about that and ask to see your, your sheets and make sure that they are correct. And then you also want to know the appeals process for each tournament in which you're competing and communicate any concerns that you have in a clear, concise, polite manner for the best results. So with that, I think we've, we've, co we've covered uh, just about everything. And hopefully this, this presentation gave you some useful information. If you're looking for, for, more, for more information, contact us. Um, and then just want to thank you guys for, for you know, stopping by and keep safe and hope to see you at a wishy competition coming soon. Yeah. We're there. Thank you, man. Okay. All set. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, right now, there don't seem to be any, I guess, open questions. So we can uh, wait a little longer. And if we don't have anything, we'll prepare for the next seminar. Oh, wait, there is a question. Matt, I'm Matthew Lee, does, does the lack of corner judges in 2000 Lack of corner judges in the 2005 rules and 2019 rules create a flaw where the judges cannot see all possible deductions and thus allow athletes to hide likely causes and deductions uh, from a certain angle of view. Uh, the, uh, actually, the, uh, the concept there was that by having the um, having the uh, the judges all in a row and assigned a different um, to to different spots you would they should cover the length of the car uh, of the carpet like um if I just miss, so. um so you they you, like you can see here for the 2005 rules it, it was supposed to the idea is that it covers the length of the carpet so that maybe judge a1 might you see not not see it but a2 can see the middle and a3 can see the other side um but while we're while we're on that we sh uh, did also want to cover on this um, since we are since you are talking about like visibility, uh, I forgot to mention that I have, in the 2019 rules, please look here that I've highlighted the, where the routine inspector, the head judge, and the uh, chief referee and the assistant chief referees are are sitting. Those are the only ones who can uh, validate your required movements. So if you are do all your re required movements over in this corner facing over here, uh, they can't see it. So the chances of you getting credit for it aren't very good. So when you do your choreo, you probably want to make sure you're kind of up in this area to uh, to uh, to make sure that they, you have high visibility. But uh, but yeah, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the other problem is that the the corner judges, uh, while they can see different angles, they're uh, because of uh, it was actually still hard for them to. Uh, uh, it, 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 they, it didn't really help that much because they still wouldn't agree because they couldn't they, since they weren't coming from the same angle uh, it didn't it, it still doesn't help too much to, to put uh, I mean it, it's okay but it, it wasn't a significant advantage to have them um, floating out in the corners okay are there any other questions okay all right all right Eugene, are we all good? Did you, did you check Facebook? Sorry, there's there's one more um, from Five Foot Wu. Um, how to notate Ma Bu on required movements form per the new requirement of 2019 rules? Is oh, sure. there any code uh, for this method? Actually, they uh, these are new rules. They're, and so they're in the in the 2005 rules, there was a requirement code. There was actually a, a graph we could use. Um, I didn't actually include it in the presentation because it will get confusing because it was eliminated in 2019. Whether it was eliminated intentionally or omitted, it's not clear. But the solution set that the, the IWF has made is that the desk tool 
um, will uh, has will create uh, uh, put in their registration to have a drop down of uh, of all of the uh, all of the movements because it, it says we don't have code. So you actually can't. Uh, um, um, uh, you, you just actually select uh, horse stands, uh, uh, drop stands, uh, forwards, forward stands, so, you know, uh, sweep, or whatever. Um, and you, you, you just actually choo choose the, the actual name. There's no, there's no codes for it in the 2019. So is there anything else? Um, I don't see anything on Zoom. Let me check Facebook one more time. Okay. Well, it, it's almost time for Peter to get started anyway, I think, because we're, we're a little over. Yeah. Okay, um, then uh, let's right. call it a wrap. And if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to contact Matt. Yeah, for sure. And then also before I leave, as the chair of the the competition event management committee, I just wanted to thank everyone for supporting the online seminars. And I just want to reiterate, you know, contact us. Let us know what you think. Um, we're at, this is the, our last seminar. We're um, and we're planning what to do in the future, but we would love to hear from you. So uh, thank you so much for your support and uh, uh, see you soon.